Hello there. Sorry, I've just started this new um, system for recording my videos. So hello there. Hello, beloveds. It's Steph Parasha, Divine Light, coming up to you from New Zealand, Aotearoa. I am behind the screen today. I am going to do a reading um, for you. I've got some cards ready, and I'm going to list the ones that I use below. hope you're doing really well out there. I hope this um, system will work for us. I've just got a couple of notes that I need to run through super quick. I'm sorry that you're just looking at this blank kind of area, but you can focus on my stones. I've got a lovely array of healing stones there and maybe some of them might be drawn you might be drawn to as I give you this message that I just downloaded a little earlier today. Today being the it's the 12th of April today, Sunday. Okay, so at the moment I would compare what we are going to metaphorically to being in a snow dome. <laughs> There's we're just being shaken up. Everything's getting shaken up. There's so much shifting, there's so much changing going on. Um, it's, it's all about growth. It can be quite uncomfortable at the moment as we kind of cre learn to grow and how to grow because we've been given an opportunity to grow in these times. And sometimes growth can be a little painful. Um, it can be a little awkward and uncomfortable. Um, but we find our way and then we, we eventually start to grow again. So at the moment it feels like we're kind of like a plant putting its roots out, creating space for itself to grow in. Um, yeah, that's how I kind of see us as humanity at the moment. We're learning to love from a higher place. It's all been a lot of the learning has been coming back to the basics of self-care 101. Um, just remembering to always come back to that if you're ever kind of not sure how to proceed in any given moment in these current changing times. And if you're generally speaking an empath and you've pretty much tuned into this channel to listen to this message today, self-care will be always really important to you just to remember when things are becoming difficult or challenging. Self-care. Um, I'm feeling at the moment there's a lot of energy being healed within the sacral chakra and the throat chakra. I feel the link between those two. I feel there is a link between those two in relation to sexuality and to sexual healing. Uh, when we think about when we are intimate, we do use the tongue and the mouth, and sorry if this is offensive to anyone, um, but you know um, we use that part of our body, the throat and the mouth and lips and and then of course at the same time we're using our sexual organs and our um, that area where the sacral chakra lies so think about that in relation to sexuality for yourself I feel there's a collective healing going on a lot for the feminine around the suppression of our voice and of our sexuality so there is going to be a lot of healing there happening, taking place, and you may feel it in your throat, is it, even as I'm giving this message, and as I tuned into this earlier, my throat was very dry, and it still kind of is. I'm onto my third coffee um, this morning. I've actually tried to go out for a walk twice this morning, but it's so rainy that I've been kind of forced back inside, probably to do this message, I would say. So when we do some of the healing that we are um, you know, we actually put ourselves first and we take the time to do some healing and we allow ourselves to feel a little uncomfortable in order to become comfortable again. We usually a, a reward will pop in. So we've got to remember at this time also that it's a really powerful time to manifest what we need and what we want. Like over the weekend, I was showing that in a really kind of in a small scale but I forgot the powers of my manifestation and how powerful they I saw them uh, show up for me yesterday and what I'd visualized, what I would have wanted and for that day and how it all just unfolded in front of me. And I thought, well, if I can do that on a small scale, come on, use this time to really create what you want and, and manifest. So make those lists visualize what you want and just go for it and at the moment we're being really rewarded and I'll tell you a little bit more about that as we go down so some of us are still working on and are, I shouldn't say still but it's ever kind of evolving in the child work 
work around our parents and parental trauma, childhood trauma. We're still really um, processing a lot of that, the wounds and the pains from our childhood time and utilizing those beautiful tools of coming and reparenting ourselves. Again, that comes back to self-care 101, remembering to ask for help. Don't forget to reach out. That doesn't just mean physically to people, um, but if we ask spiritually for help, often spirit will bring the kind of help that we didn't even realize that was possible, that we actually really do need from a higher level. Remembering as we're healing this trauma, um, also while we're asking for help, we're also asking to help release and surrender and let go. Um, as we are healing the trauma, and I'm getting that this is happening for a lot of the Gen X, so if you're a Gen X generation, which means you would have been born in the 19, probably verging on 60s, 70s, 60s maybe more towards from baby boomers onwards, but 60s, 70s, 80s Gen Xs um, that were born in that generation, maybe probably not the 90s, the 90s, people if you're born in the 90s you would be more a millennial, so um, however, let's not let that burden us um, as to what generation is, but this generation tended to turn towards drugs and alcohol and have what we're now seeing as a lot of mental health problems from that style of parenting, a lot of attachment trauma, a lot of relationship problems, we find it hard to release and let go. And we also find it hard to forgive. And I was being drawn to uh, make a link between the word forgive and gift when we give. So we've got to remember as part of our healing that when we let go and release and we forgive the person for what they did to us, because no doubt they were probably hurt and the cycle continued on. You know, they didn't know what they were really doing. They didn't realize that they were hurting you. They were just doing what they needed to do to survive at the time. That was their survival mechanism too, which doesn't take away your pain by any stretch. Allow that pain and that grief process to uh, be expressed, whatever feelings you've got around the parent. Like this is not skipping steps, remember? Um, but when we're ready to move on and forgive um, and we've done our kind of expressions of anger and, you know, allowed that pain to be felt fully and we're ready to go to forgiveness, we will see that when we're able to let those things go that we get another kind of reward will come at like a lessons off and releases the tension of the toxic tie that may have been there and in, in its place will come some kind of uh, beautiful gift. So, and I've been seeing that for people. Um, people that are at this time feeling unsafe or not trusting what's happening or feeling as if the world is kind of falling apart and as we always say spiritually sometimes things have to fall apart in order to fall into place or it's not that things are falling apart it is actually that things are falling into place so there is a lot of the energy of the falling away of the old definitely with so much going on in the universe and I'm not going to talk in specifics in this particular video but there's a lot of the old beliefs that are falling away and we're needing to find the ground that we need to be on. And what I'm being told spiritually is you will always be taken care of. Do not forsake me and I will not forsake you. So remember your spirituality. Remember your connection to source and spirit and that being the utmost importance. Seek me first and all else will come unto thee. Love and heal. Forgive. Not forget to forgive <laughs> um, yourself and others then we can move on in our hearts forgiveness is freedom okay so that was the message that I got spiritually today I'm just going to check that this camera set, set up is still working yep looks like it is um, okay I will keep going great so now I'm going to do a reading um, I've got some cards here and I just got sort of guided that we just need to pull a few cards for Twin Flames. Um, my personal Twin Flame journey is um, we're friends, you know, at, we communicate every few weeks, you know, we're not doing anything in specifics at the moment, but um, anyway, let's see what the energy is for Twin Flames. I am actually 
working with other twin flames at the moment around a lot of the heal their own healing and it, it's going really well so yeah I'll just uh, this is not you know well, I've got to plug sometimes but if any of you are looking for a little bit more guidance um, around your situation I come from a very holistic perspective so I like to look at the practical the psychological um, the social and the spiritual we bring it all together and and we just you know anyway let's find let's get a card for twin flames and to represent the energy that's going on right now let's card. hopefully one will just pop out now so guys i don't want to make it too noisy around the camera uh, microphone let's get a card for twin flames for this time Represent the energies of twin flames. There we go. Four of Pentacles that just popped out. Hopefully you could see that. Four of Pentacles. Yep. So what I get for that is that I do see that as a very practical card. Actually, I see that as uh, grounding into the earth practically in terms of mon monetarily, financially, um, maybe getting a house and really looking at. You know, really grounding in and settling in and creating those foundations for your connection. How are you going to manifest each other in this reality, in this reality? And I've, I was talking to twins, another twin about this the other day, that our relationship with our twin flame does need to be on the level of a divine union. If some people call it a fifth dimensional relationship, that's when we can come together and bring it down into the earth plane. So I feel like, again, we're getting that message. We need to continue to try and bring our relationships into the earth plane. I'm just going to get another clarifier on that. So this is another deck. And the clarifier on the energy of the twin planes. I want to ask kind of how are we going to make that happen? What kind of steps do we need to take to allow that to happen? Thank you all my followers that are still with me and have kept listening. I really appreciate that you continue to follow and I hope these messages do help. I know that I don't have a really big online presence. Um, it's just because I have a full-time job as well. And I find I really enjoy doing these readings on the weekends. So I have time for this on the weekends. So let's get some help from Spirit to show Twin Flames what they need to do to progress their relationship of their twin flame and their own journey forward. I need these three, yep. I said to take these three. Okay, I'm not going to worry. Oh, yep. Okay. <laughs> so, I hope you can see these cards. Um, this one is base chakra. Kind of was talking about the sacral and the throat chakra before, but all the chakras are related. It's interesting that these two chakras came out and we've got heart chakra right there in the middle. And, you know, that is actually the crux of it, to be honest, I will have to say. You know, it's getting our foundation down. It's getting, uh, saying you need to get grounded. You need to get your foundations down. I'm um, getting that real Virgo energy. I'm a Virgo, so I can really relate to this. But practical, practical, practical. Like base, get your roots down on the earth and find out where you're going to land and let that be where you need to be. And then you're creating a foundation for your twin flame, the one that's listening. They're saying, oh, what if the other one does that somewhere else? I can hear somebody ask that question and you both land somewhere and you've got your roots down. How are you going to come together? But the one who's listening to this is the one that needs to get their roots down. The other one will come to you through the heart, always. And look how that similar that card. I hope you can see this. Um, excuse my arm, my hair coming in <laughs> this side. Um, yeah, prosperity, guys. I was talking about the manifestation I was talking about I see that represents exactly what I was talking about the growth and the space that we need to put our roots down to grow and to be abundant and to have all the things that we need and look there's two hands there coming together representing I feel the beautiful growth of the the twin flame journey and bringing it into the earth the earth is very particular at the moment I'm getting a lot of earth energy and how that the earth and the heart are connected, how we interact with the earth, how we behave on the earth and in our hearts. There's the four again. I see that the, that card's a four, interestingly, the heart chakra card. These two are ones. 
so it's interesting because I always get the 144 um, so again it's just we're on earth guys we're on earth so we need to be here those of you that tend to fly away a little let's get yourselves back grounded into earth and really you're working on that okay so let's just ask one final question I might just do two other decks to get any more clarity on this um, so this is you know obviously how the steps that we need to take um, can I, I hear the question, I'm just tuning in out there, the question about our, our other, your other, I feel like the one who is listening to this wants to know what our other has a message, what, where are they at, where is your other at, and, and what message do they have for you, oh, excuse me, somebody needs to know this, there's a few too many cards there, let's get a message for those that really need to know what the other is thinking and feeling. I do feel a lot of fear out there, guys, and when I tune into this question and I feel the message I want to give those of you that are in fear about what your other feels about you, I uh, just want to say that's your, you need to bring that to you again, because that's that fear of abandonment and loss, and, and you really need to try and work on healing that. I know it's hard. But that abandonment and loss, you don't want the grief or the fear of that in your twin flame connection. A lot of people really need to heal that and, and take the time to heal that. It's hard, I know. I know. But it's really important. Oh, here we go. This kind of jumped. So this is kind of interesting, these colours here today. We've got orange and reds and we've got creativity. This is the crystal, liquid crystal deck. Carnelian. Okay, Carnelian. Um, I haven't got my book. That's, never mind. I'm just going to tune into the energy of this Carnelian. Often I would remember seeing this card come up with me around addictions. So I feel like sometimes what might be holding us back in this area of becoming creative. I feel, as I'm saying that I'm feeling my, this in my solar plexus now, so we're getting that fear of kind of using your power to get what you want. Um, maybe the, the people, some of you were shut down, um, kind of doing what you love to do. You were sort of told, very often told to go this way or that way according to what's the done thing. But you've actually got a sort of little fire in your belly of um wanting to just be your own self okay so this is the message from your beloved isn't it the other this is where this is coming from ah, no I see, sorry so your beloved is in the state of trying to work out their passion and their purpose and how they're going to earn money from doing that and i feel like a lot of your others are very creative artistic type people musicians artists creators that aren't generally accepted by mainstream society and I know this is very much true of my own twin flame so um, you probably I guess the message seems to be that you might be perceived to be more of the responsible one um, in this particular reading so don't be afraid to encourage your twin and you yourself also be okay with being a little bit flexible and loose and loosen up around the mainstream ideas about what is the way to do things and what is the way of how we even earn money of how we be in the world like there's a lot more flexibility now of how we can behave and so just kind of I feel there needs to be a bit of flexibility there around your other they are really exploring their creative side right now well, they always have done. Um, that is part of the journey. You're needing to accept their growth in that area. And it's some, for some of you, it may challenge your beliefs. Your yeah, it challenges some of your own beliefs, your family's beliefs. But that's the whole idea of it, because that's what twin flames. I had to do right so sorry I'm just shuffling another deck to just get a clarification this is the Christabel Jessica's Divine Feminine Masculine cards 
I'm just going to get this in here. Give me one of each. And then this two. Well, okay. No. Okay, what I hear is whatever comes out is relevant for both masculine and feminine. So let's try and get back into that thing, way of thinking. Yeah. So this card is for both energies because whatever you're doing, you're mirroring back to your twin. Okay, and you won't realize I've discovered this with another person I'm working with. Your shadow won't allow you to see what your twin flame is doing as you're doing as well, but in the opposite way. And you need to look at that. So let's show up what it is that all twin flames are working on. Both masculine and feminine. Oh, here we go. A couple fell out there. Let's see what they are. Okay, I think they're both relevant, so I'm going to keep them here. Can you see that, guys? I think so. Okay, so this first one here, actually, it's the other way around. This one. The first one here is the 11. 11, yay! That's all what all twin flames want to see, right? Um, so we, we're working on this. This is what we're working on. Love it. Tent in the background, river. You know, that is totally me and my twin flame, guys. I'm just going to say, oh my goodness. <gasps> oh. So we're needing to get closer to this connection of love with our twin flame, um, whichever you are, masculine or feminine. <clears throat> uh, this does involve, you know, some of that healing needs to happen because you're still afraid. You're still afraid. You're still afraid of that connection. You're still afraid to get intimate. You're afraid of yourself and what you might do in that connection should your twin flame or it not work out or you've just got all these fears of it, of it not working out that it's just not working out. So this, you need to remind yourself that that's what you're wanting. You're wanting that beautiful connection, that just loving connection without all the complications, without all the fears. And you, we all are transforming at the moment. Excuse my arm. God of um, Osiris. So there will, hopefully we all know that story of Isis, who was the put back together all the parts of Osiris that got chopped up and she cried so much because he had been harmed and he, um, that she apparently filled up the River Nile with her tears and that was that is the River Nile and then she put them all back together and sort of rebuilt him again and it is that, you know, it is that breaking down of so many of our belief systems and our structures and how we are even made up as humans and we're all kind of broken and we're all in pieces at the moment we're all in parts and there's all these parts of us and we are trying to put ourselves back together and create sort of the new and that's what that transformation is we are really doing that and we've been doing that for a long time we're still doing it we are in the midst of a massive transformation and we've been talking about this since i know i've been on this path of spirituality seriously you know like well since I was 15 years old I've been interested in tarot reading and the occult and all of that and then in my 1820s you know I was interested in India I went when I was 24 interested in spirituality finding the way you know I had a massive awakening on the birth of my daughter in 2006 I've been on this path for a good 20-30 years of spirituality and things have constantly moving that's for certain we are still in the process of movement and change but this is it's it's getting bigger and stronger so guys um i'm going to wish you all really well for this journey thank you so much for tuning in today and listening and staying with me and um, i'm sending you out lots and lots of love and healing from my heart and um yeah i hope i can bring you another video next weekend okay everyone Bye for now. Just gotta put my hand here probably to stop stop this video.